over to Jerry King to begin the webinar. Jerry? Thanks so much, Kevin. Uh, thanks once again to, to everyone attending the webinar today. I really appreciate everyone taking their time out of the day to sit down and meet with us. So uh, just to give everyone a quick high-level overview of who we are, uh, Flexera is the name, and it, it's important because uh, over the course of the last four years, we've changed names three times uh, and uh, really want to make sure that everybody recognizes us as, in fact, the makers of Install Shield, which I'm sure many out there will readily uh, identify with. So uh, amongst Install Shield, we also make uh, Install Anywhere. Uh, a sister uh, solution to install shield for multi-platform uh, users, uh, other products such as Admin Studio and Workflow Manager. Uh, as a company, we are located in Chicago, Illinois, about 30 miles northwest of Chicago, uh, in a little village called Schaumburg, Illinois. We also have locations in Santa Clara, California, over in APAC, uh, in Tokyo, Japan to be specific, and uh, offices in EMEA are located in Cheshire and the UK, just north of Liverpool. As a company, we have a revenue of about, about $150 million and just over 400 plus employees. Uh, just to give you a little bit more insight as to some of our product sets here, uh, in a nutshell, Flexera software makes software solutions designed to facilitate software installations and help enterprises streamline their infrastructure and reduce cost through application management. Part of our family of solutions is the installer family. There we have Install Shield and Install Anywhere, which I just mentioned uh, previous. Uh, on the other side of this uh, product coin, so to speak, we have Admin Studio and Workflow Manager. And these tools will be, in, in essence, showcased today with our approach to uh, describing better ways to handle OS migrations and managing uh, applications. So what is Admin Studio? Or it should also be posed to you as, what is application readiness? In a nutshell, Admin Studio is the centerpiece of our application readiness solution, which helps systems administrators prepare applications for deployment, maximize productivity, and avoid DLL conflicts between applications within an enterprise. And I'm not really sure how technically savvy everyone on the phone is, but just to sort of spell this out a little further, DLL conflicts and application uh, uh, conflicts are pose a serious concern to uh, IT departments everywhere. Uh, the results of an application conflict or application mismanagement can, in many cases, be catastrophic on an enterprise. And what I'm talking about here is when applications cease to work, production comes to a halt, and then, of course, we see loss of revenue. And this problem really shines a light on the purpose and the focus of what we call Admin Studio and application management. To that point, what we're starting to see is there's organizations out there that are really starting to take a better and more in-depth look at what they're doing from a strategy standpoint. You know, application management has become more critical to the success of an organization now more so than ever before, if for no other reason than it has a direct effect on how an organization and their ability uh, meets their needs and helps them to grow. You know, application strategy is needed not just for the actual sake of managing the applications themselves, but we're also talking about dealing with the changes and the challenges that new technologies uh, within the marketplace bring. So let's take a closer look at that, and let me explain what I mean by this. So today's enterprises, as many of you know, face a number of different challenges. Probably the largest challenge that most organizations are looking at right now is properly planning and executing uh, a Windows 7 migration. You know, there. This is a significant project that can be extremely expensive and uh, very complex. There's also the everyday routine of uh, application deployments. You know, what we're seeing out there now is organizations regularly have to go back and reevaluate how they're going about handling these applications and how they're managing them. You know, about 30% of an organization's applications actually require updating, repackaging, and deployment on an annual basis. We're also talking about user-centric computing environments and uh, increased application lifestyle management complexity. 
uh, it's becoming increasingly difficult to manage and uh, manually prepare applications for deployment. And what we're really talking about here is an organization's ability to meet these needs, you know, the bandwidth of an organization. You know, the pressure exists on migrating applications and adopting new technologies. So it's really important to have a solid view, a solid approach to application management. Uh, there's also preparing applications for deployment can be time consuming, risky, and uh, intensely manual task. And again, we're getting back to uh, talking about bandwidth. And uh, last, you know, the, the, the lack of a best practice uh, process creates a decentralized reactive approach to application management. And it, one can also look at this from the standpoint of the absence of an application strategy or a solution to meet a strategy can really and truly be a recipe for disaster. So application readiness solutions. Um, what I should probably do here is uh, turn it over to our senior sales engineer, Mr. Mike O'Connor, to lend a little bit more insight as to what it is we're talking about here and what it is that Admin Studio brings to the table uh, in remedying these, uh, these approaches. Mike? All right. Thanks, Jerry. So uh, our application readiness solution is broken out into a few different uh, components. Um, so the first uh, area you see here is the base Admin Studio tool. Uh, this is what we've had for about a decade or so, offering um, IT organizations and different enterprises, government agencies, and um, education, things like that. Um, uh, ability to take applications that are not already in the Windows installer or MSI format, be able to first repackage those, get them into a standard uh, Windows uh, installer format so it's easy, easier to deploy out to Windows be able to customize those uh, MSIs that they've created as well as uh, MSIs that they get from the vendor if the vendor did provide them a, uh, an MSI. And allow you to customize those installations, be able to test them against one another. Uh, Jerry mentioned earlier some things we can do for DLL, registry, file conflicts. Those are the type of things that we can basically load all of our applications in what we call our application catalog, which is a SQL server and uh, database and be able to cross-reference them, be able to test them and, and find any conflicts between those applications. And then pass them off to a distribution system. We work with all the major distribution systems out there from Microsoft, Novell, um, Marimba, Tivoli, uh, Landesk, things like that. So that's the base Admin Studio uh, product. What we can also add on top of Admin Studio is what we call a virtualization pack. So this adds the ability, one, to be able to test applications to see if they are suitable candidates for virtualization. So we can uh, save you time and energy instead of going through a manual process through the uh, virtualization vendors tools, which typically allow you to create a virtual package, and then you find out afterwards that maybe it wasn't even a good candidate. It's got device drivers or uh, shell extensions or some other uh, aspect of an application that, don't, that doesn't work well uh, with application virtualization. So we can tell you that up front. Uh, save the IT administrator a lot of time and energy from trying to spend all that time and then finding out afterwards it wasn't a good candidate anyway, be able to find which applications up front aren't good candidates, put those off to the side, and take the applications that might need some minor tweaking or are already good to go and be able to create those virtualization formats. So we support Microsoft, uh, Citrix, and VMware in their application virtualization formats. So we can test those applications, and then through our tool we can actually natively create those formats as well. We can do it potentially in a batch process, which saves uh, additional time and energy for an organization. So instead of spending weeks or maybe months, depending on if they have hundreds or thousands of applications, be able to shrink it down to maybe a week or two at most. So we also have the application compatibility pack that can also be added on with Admin Studio with or without virtualization. So both of these can be added on um, one, either one or together. And the application compatibility pack allows you to test applications specifically for Windows 7, uh, both 32 as well as 64-bit platforms, Server 2008 R2, and original Server 2008. We also have the ability also to add on uh, Internet Explorer testing as well. So we can test applications both that are natively installed on, an app, on a computer that, are, uh, that make system calls to Internet Explorer. A lot of things change from Internet Explorer 6 to 7 to 8. And some of those applications making those uh, API calls, those system calls, don't work anymore. 
so we can test those applications, as well as we can test web-based web applications, so websites and uh, web folders that would usually be hosted in IIS. We can test those applications and see if they'll render properly in IE8, and if not, be able to uh, suggest fixes for them. Um, we do have in, uh, plans to add Internet Explorer 9 testing uh, soon. Uh, currently, it's in, uh, Internet Explorer 8. Uh, the reason for the browser testing as well is because moving to Windows 7 not only is a new operating system, uh, but uh, has the end user. They're basically, you know, they're being um, required to move up uh, to uh, a new version of Internet Explorer because you can't run IE6 on uh, Windows 7, at least according to Microsoft rules. So. Uh, some of that includes uh, web-based applications. As more and more enterprises have web-based applications, that's important. So not only testing native, natively installed applications, uh, but web applications as well. And then we also have Workflow Manager. So Workflow Manager, it's a separate product, but it is part of our what we call our application readiness uh, solution suite. Um, it heavily does work and interact with Admin Studio. Uh, it allows an enterprise to encapsulate kind of the whole workflow process from the initial application request going to uh, an IT organization and going through the whole process of evaluating the application request. Is it a valid request? Is this an application that we will accept in our environment, uh, be able to acquire it, um, repackage it, customize it, test it, um, and then track it and track that all the way through to distribution. So it allows an IT organization to have a trackable um, workflow or, and, and framework in order to go through that whole process from the initial request all the way to distribution. Tracks everything, gives upper management the ability to uh, get reporting off of that and understand you know, how many applications they have currently uh, in request, what phases are they in that request, uh, how, you know, how long it's taking, making sure an organization can make their, meet their SLA targets. And if there's something going wrong or if there's taking too much time on a, a particular set of applications, be able to understand where you know, the bottleneck is and maybe be able to tweak it. Um, and also gives, make sure that everybody that's involved in the process um, is following all the guidelines and rules set up by that organization. It's all customizable in terms of the, the it's a web-based interface, so they can customize and, and choose what the um, what everyone sees and how what the, uh, the rules and you know what that workflow is, and also be able to notify uh, everybody involved in the process, so it can potentially link up with a internal you know email server and be able to email people, uh, whoever is in charge of the process and. Also, uh, IT managers can assign you know, certain people in IT the different tasks. So it allows you to, to put that framework around workflow manager uh, or around this whole process and uh, be able to track that. So this is a breakout of the base admin studio 10. So we have our basic repackaging of MSIs. We have customization. Uh, gets into our application catalog where we import all of our applications uh, into this catalog, be able to search for different attributes for, for a particular application, be able to do conflict resolution, testing and resolution to those applications. So like I said, if there's a, two different versions of the same driver going the same directory or two, two different uh, data entries going to the same registry key, we can detect those type of conflicts and fix those for you. We can do some Q, help uh, with QA testing so you can natively install an application on a platform and be able to make sure it's operating correctly, and then pass that up to distribution, uh, whatever distribution system that you want to use. And quick mention the, that the customization, the editor inside of Admin Studio is Install Shield. So um, when you buy Admin Studio, you get the Install Shield tool as part of it. It's the same tool a lot of software companies use to package up their software. You as an IT organization have the same tool to be able to make new installations, be able to customize them, and so forth. That's the base Admin Studio. And this is our application compatibility pack. Like I mentioned, we can uh, assess the whole application portfolio. Uh, depending on the addition of Admin Studio, we can load in dozens, if not hundreds, of applications at one time, be able to test them, uh, report on them, tell you what issues. We um, give them three different levels of uh, each application. Either it's a green, that means it's already good to go for the platforms you tested. So for example, Windows 7 64-bit, we can see which applications are already good to go as is. Uh, we give a yellow for applications that ha are going to have issues with uh, that platform that we tested, but we can fix those issues. We can suggest fixes for you, and then you have the option to apply those fixes, um, and we do that through the use of a transform file. Um, and then we have applications that are red, not necessarily automatically fixable applications. For example, uh, application, if you're looking for Windows 7 64-bit, and it's a 16-bit driver, 
16-bit drivers aren't supported on Windows 7 64-bit, uh, so we can't automatically rewrite the driver, uh, but we can tell you exactly that application, you know, has this issue for Windows 7 64-bit. It's, you know, it's a 16-bit driver, and we identify it down to the actual driver itself. So we'll tell you, you know, ABC driver DLL is going to be the issue uh, if we try to run this on Windows 7. Uh, we can, like I said, we can apply some automatic fixes, and we do that through the user's transform file. So you load an MSI in here, you test it. If there's uh, issues that we can fix, we'll create a transform file that's right next to the MSI. And now if you deploy that MSI with that transform file applied, all the issues uh, that we can fix for you uh, have been resolved. And this is kind of a, uh, a continuous process, right? So there's other solutions that do some application compatibility. It's kind of a usually meant as a one-time solution. They're usually licensed, you know, for a year purpose or something. Uh, but we recognize this is kind of an ongoing procedure, right? As you move to Windows 7, you have new applications coming in. Um, also, of course, new operating systems are coming out. So if you uh, have Admin Studio and the application compatibility pack, you can stay in the cycle of being able to stay up to date and be able to test as, uh, as we recognize it's, a, it's an overall ongoing process. And we can do that for like I said, Windows 7, 32 and 64-bit, Server 2008 uh, with and without R2, uh, and we also can do some uh, Internet Explorer 8 testing. And the fixes that we can do, especially for Windows 7, usually come to about 90%, 98% of applications. So 98% of applications we can get ready for Windows 7, whether they already were uh, eligible uh, or able to before testing, or you know we can identify those issues and then fix those for you. We have Admin Studio, the virtualization pack. So this is the uh, testing specifically for application virtualization. Uh, we do Microsoft App V, we do VMware ThinApp, and we do Citrix ThinApp. So we can test applications to see if they're good candidates for virtualization. Not every application is a good candidate. So we can tell you which ones are good candidates, which ones might need some minor tweaking, similar to application compatibility pack in Windows 7. So there might be some minor issues that we can suggest to fix for and fix those for you. And then we've got applications, like I said, device drivers, uh, other things like that that just don't work well with that application virtualization format, at least in its current form. Um, you know, we basically have to put those off to the side and wait until the, uh, the technology uh, uh, adapts to, to support those. So we can test those applications. We can do an actual process so we can actually write uh, and create apps natively, app v, the VMware, and uh, uh, Citrix. Uh, and we can do that without the use of needing their tools, tool sets. So we work with all three of those uh, big virtualization vendors. They showed us what needs to go into their uh, format. And if it's an MSI, a lot of times we can just read the MSI and without having to uh, repackage it, install it, anything, we can read that MSI and map it directly into one or more of those virtualization formats. And specifically for AppV, we have some uh, post creation editing. So a lot of people, uh, a lot of focus on our virtualization just from our customers that have been AppV, and we have a lot of uh, AppV specific customers, and uh, they've asked for a uh, ability to edit packages either through what Admin Studio creates or through the native Microsoft Sequencer tool. So we have an editor that can directly edit AppV packages once they're created, be able to add additional files and folders and a lot of other things. So that saves a lot of time uh, and energy. Time and energy saved through testing of applications, time and energy saved through uh, automatically being able to convert a lot of applications, uh, time and energy saving, um, you know, post-editing. Instead of having to go through the process all over again, you can just open the package, make changes, and save them. And then we can give you a dashboard report where um, we can give you, you know, what the kind of status is of applications, where they're at uh, in the whole process, and uh, be able to see which applications. And also we can do some post-virtualization testing to make sure that uh, those applications conform with uh, best practices from those vendors. And then we have Workflow Manager. So you've got a couple different groups here. You've got the um, actual uh, requesters of applications. Uh, you've got the IT manager, and then you've got uh, the people actually working on the request. So Workflow Manager can potentially be uh, stood up in a um, IT environment, in a, a larger organization's environment. Uh, end users can go to Workflow Manager. Um, it can be the, the form that they fill out is customizable uh, by the customer. So it asks exactly, you know, how much or how little the IT organization needs in order to uh, request and review uh, an application package. They can re um, review that request, and they can ask uh, as much or as little as they want 
uh, for the end user. You know, make some forms uh, fields optional versus required. Um, so it's all customizable. So you, instead of lots of emails going back and forth and lots of phone calls between the end users saying, I need application ABC and going to the IT and going back and forth and saying, well, I didn't get all the information I need yet. Please, you know, provide me with additional information. Instead of all that back and forth, you can have a one-time IT says, okay, end user, go to uh, the workflow manager website, submit uh, the application request. Uh, they can't submit the request unless all the required information is filled out. That request goes over into workflow manager. Uh, IT management uh, gets notification. They can review the re they can review the request and approve it uh, if it all looks good. And then once it's approved, they can go ahead and assign it to a series of packagers. Uh, also, people that could work on the customization, testing, and so forth of the application. And that whole process is tracked, right? There's a uh, there's a timestamp and a user stamp. So when somebody works on something, it's it's uh, marked that way, and uh, allows a um, make sure that the people are working on this request and you know, follow all the rules. So there's a website that can pop up and shows them the exact steps, what they need to follow in terms in order to repackage it. Uh, you know, is virtualization required or not? Uh, we do our workflows to support branching. So depending on what the end user submits and also as you go through the process, it can adapt and change uh, depending on the situation for that particular request. So all that's tracked and now all that's reportable and those reports can be read by IT management to make sure that everything's on track there's not any slowdowns or, or bottlenecks, and uh, be able to track it through that whole process. And like I said, Workflow Manager does intera uh, interface interact with Admin Studio. So um, it shares the same application catalog. All that data um, gets shared and flowed in from Workflow Manager into Admin Studio and vice versa. So it's all uh, available in one uh, environment. Okay. So now I wanted to go just a brief uh, demonstration of the of what's inside of Admin Studio and kind of what it looks like for the end user. All right. So this is Admin Studio. This is Admin Studio 10. Uh, this is Enterprise Complete. So this is the high-end edition of Admin Studio. We have a few different editions, and then like we mentioned earlier. You can add um, optionally the application compatibility pack as well as the virtualization pack. So complete has both in there. So this is Admin Studio Enterprise Complete. This is the start page. This is what the end user sees when they first start it up. And after they set up the infrastructure, uh, these are the three goals that Admin Studio can help you accomplish. So on the far right is our traditional repackaging applications into the Windows installer or MSI format. And so we can capture those installations. We can repackage those. We can customize them, test them, fix them and pass them off for distribution. Uh, virtualization, that's where we're testing applications. Are they good candidates for virtualization? Is it a good idea to even try to virtualize this? And uh, if so, we can go ahead and actually create those packages in the Microsoft, VMware, and Citrix formats. And then the other goal is application compatibility testing. So this is specifically testing applications for Windows 7, 32 and 64-bit Server 2008, and Internet Explorer 8. And so if I click on this goal, it takes you to a simplified workflow which you would go through the process. So in terms of repackaging applications into the MSI or Windows installer format, you would first use our repackager. Uh, this is kind of a diagram to show you what the repackager would do. So we can take in legacy applications, EXEs, script-based installs. We actually run this on a clean uh, test machine, usually a virtual machine. Our repackager kind of sits in the background watching what the installation is doing. Uh, once the installation is done, it can kind of compile all that information together be able to list all the files, folders, registry keys, INI entries that were added to that machine, and then take that information once the, um, the, the packager has uh, reviewed all the details, and go ahead and actually build uh, an MSI from that. Once an MSI is built, then you can go into the editing phase. Uh, like I mentioned, the editor inside of Admin Studio is Install Shield. So you can take this MSI that you built with the repackager. You could also take an MSI that you got direct from the vendor, uh, make changes to this installation, adding additional files, registry keys, adding custom actions, a lot of other custom configuration. And that can be either saved directly to the MSI, which you'd probably do if you were working with an MSI that you created through the repackager. Uh, if this is a vendor MSI that you started with, probably the best practice is usually leave the initial uh, installation you got from the vendor alone and the state changes are saved in what's called a transform file. This, this kind of overlays on top of the MSI uh, and adds the customizations. So that's, that would be the editor. So once you repackage it, then you've edited it. Next would be the uh, testing. Uh, so one of the tests that we have is um, uh, our conflict testing. 
and remediation. That works around our what we call our application catalog. So this is a, this is kind of a diagram of what the application catalog looks like. You've got some different groups for a commercial uh, customer. You might have marketing, R and D, sales systems. Uh, what groups there are, how many groups there are, groups inside groups. That's all customizable by the end user. They can pour in MSIs, OS snapshots, snapshots, merge modules, patches, transforms, and we also, of course, now support. Since we can create virtual packages, we also want to be able to import those in the catalog and do testing and reporting off of that as well. What a sample catalog gives you, as I mentioned, we have, so you can see on the left here, we've got some different applications uh, into different groups. We group applications together, so under Firefox, I could have, say, an MSI version, and this is the AppV version, and the Citrix version, and the ZenApp version, um, uh, or I should say ZenApp and, and ZenApp. And um, so we group those all together. And on the right here, you can see this is kind of a, a dashboard. This is a dashboard report. It tells you a real-time view of what's inside the catalog. So you can see uh, I've got different application types. Most of them are MSIs, but some are virtual packages. I've run our compatibility uh, testing on this. I can see which applications are good candidates already for Windows 7 and which ones have issues. And this one, this is specific to AppV. It tells our virtualization readiness. And there's some other reports available that can drill in and get more in depth. But uh, any of these reports, you can also drill in here. So say for AppV, for example, we can, we can see that this BlackBerry application is not a good candidate for uh, virtualization for AppV in this case because it's got a device driver, and these are all the device drivers inside of it. So again, instead of spending time and energy trying to get, um, trying to go through the process, try to virtualize this application and find out it's not a good candidate, you know, right up front through, through this report, uh, why it's not a good candidate in, in detail. So speaking of virtualization, uh, the main aspect you can create uh, one of virtual packages one at a time through a standard repackaging process. Uh, but for those existing Admin Studio users that have been repackaging for a long time, that have got them into MSIs, from people that have been using other repackaging tools that are looking to move to Admin Studio, and even uh, in organizations that still don't have any repackaging solution, they're looking to move to it, uh, we can automate that process of creating virtual packages too. And that's what this automated application converter is. So we can take in MSIs, EXE, and script-based installs. We can pull them from a local network share. We can actually pull from SCCM. So if they're specifically using SCCM as their distribution system and they already have, say, MSIs loaded in there, we can actually connect to SCCM, pull those, run that through this process, and we can actually publish them right back uh, up to SCCM. Um, and then, of course, if they're existing admin studio user and using our application catalog, uh, we can pull packages from there. So this is the virtualization readiness. So we pull in an application. Uh, we say it's a good candidate for virtualization by using that BlackBerry as an, as an example. Uh, we basically say it's not suitable, so we put that something like that would be put off to the side. If it's a straightforward MSI, we can go ahead and actually convert that, run that through the converter, read the MSI, and map it directly into a Microsoft VMware or Citrix virtualization format. If it's any other format or if it's an MSI with a heavy uh, dose of customization or, or scripting, we can automate the process of repackaging too. So we can actually interface with a, a Microsoft or VMware a uh, virtual machine server and automate the process of spinning up virtual machines, copying that package into it, repackaging it, copying the output down, and then running it through the converter. So before where we were taking in MSIs that were fairly straightforward and can convert those directly, uh, we didn't um, have uh, a good ability to handle those uh, with previous uh, additions or few releases back. But now with Admin Studio and the current release, we can basically you can throw any type of package at this. Uh, we make the determination of what needs to, what needs to happen and then automate that whole process. And we can create uh, virtual packages. We can also use this for MSI creation as well. Okay. So going back to the start page, we basically covered the, 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 the goal of creating MSIs as well as virtual packages. And going into compatibility testing is where our compatibility solver tool uh, comes into play. And this is, again, testing applications for the readiness on Windows 7, uh, Inter Explorer 8 as well. Uh, SQL, uh, 64-bit uh, Windows Server 2008. So we load these applications into the compatibility tool. Uh, we evaluate um, based off of our rules that we have built in that are usually come from Microsoft best practices as well as our own testing. Uh, give you a report, uh, which applications are already good to go as is, which ones are yellow, uh, uh, have some issues, but we can fix those automatically for you uh, if you wish. 
And then those applications that have more red issues, usually, again, usually having to do with how the application itself was written. Uh, we can catalog all those applications, fix the yellow issues so they're now green, and then uh, create a, a fix through the use of a transform file, and then be able to um, you know, push that up for distribution. The whole point of this tool is just taking the amount of time that an IT organization needs to test applications. A lot of, a lot of uh, organizations are manually installing an application, a single one at a time, on a machine. Does it install? Does it work properly? Uh, finding any errors and error messages and other problems, and trying to take that information and backtrack and figure out, you know, what's causing it. That could take, you know, maybe two or three days sometimes on an application uh, for a single one. And you know, if you've got hundreds, if not thousands, of applications, that can take months or, or even longer. So this is we can load applications into the tool. Uh, we can test them, and in a matter of a few minutes, tell you which applications are going to have issues. And for those issues, we can automatically fix those and, again, spend another couple of minutes fixing those, too. So shrinking that, that, that window for testing down to maybe a day for you know, potentially hundreds of applications uh, at a time and then be able to pass those off to user acceptance testing. So being able to, to help people migrate to Windows 7 faster is definitely a major goal of uh, application compatibility and the compatibility solver inside of it. And then to mention, we work with all the major distribution systems. So once you're ready to push it out to a distribution system of your choice, we support the major ones. We can also just pass to a, a network location. And anything that we don't have support for, we can, we can pull packages from there, too. All right. With that, I'll turn it back over to Jerry. Thanks, Mike. I really, really appreciate uh, all the insight you've provided us with. Sure, um, to sort of uh, move back on track here and uh, get back uh, to the whole discussion of uh, Admin Studio and more to the point, application readiness, you know, who buys Admin Studio and why? And what just, again, uh, what is application readiness? And I sort of want everybody sort of take a step back and uh, think about the fact that the, the concept of application readiness is not limited to any specific vertical. Uh, any IT department out there uh, facing the problems that are now uh, coming up with the advents of big uh, uh, events such as Win7 migrations needs to have a solid approach to application readiness. And of course, as uh, many of you out there have seen from Mike's demonstration, Admin Studio really plays into uh, giving you a strong foundation for this application readiness strategy. It's not limited to any verticals or any, uh, any such markets. You know, it appeals to um, your mid to large size companies, IT departments. Uh, it's intended to provide a reliable means of application and patch testing and deployment preparation. Uh, your key uh, purchaser, your key end user here is your corporate IT systems manager and your IT uh, technicians, the engineers who uh, prepare these applications for enterpri enterprise deployment. Um, I know the focus of this webinar is, in fact, uh, really geared towards Windows 7 migration, and that is, without a doubt, one of the largest factors why people take a closer look at what they're doing with regard to application readiness, but uh, there's also this idea of implementing or using uh, new technologies like virtualization technologies such as Microsoft's App V, Citrix Zen App, or VMware's Thin App, as well as your companies that are growing, uh, be it uh, organically or just through acquisition. You know, we see a lot of these organizations uh, growing in size and moving to larger uh, systems and networks, and they're considering uh, different uh, software distribution systems. So Admin Studio really falls into uh, a position where they can really facilitate these types of organizations with their growth and with uh, meeting their overall needs for application readiness. And just to sort of delve a little bit more into this whole idea of Windows 7 migration, uh, so many people out there are taking a, a long, hard look at this and uh, coming to the realization that it's not as simple as flipping uh, a light switch, that it's a very, very uh, complicated matter and it uh, takes a lot of uh, thought 
and uh, planning in order to get a, realize the scope and actually execute on a Windows 7 migration. And the slide that we're looking at here, you can see that we've broken it out into uh, four different quadrants. You know, your planning stages, your uh, assessing uh, compatibility, uh, the fixing and packaging and deployment, uh, all these things that Mike has uh, sort of uh, went into a deep dive with, uh, with regard to Admin Studio. There's really no other solution that's out there on the market that really meets the needs uh, from beginning to end. You'll see that in this slide there's uh, quite a few other uh, players that will help out in aspects of a Windows 7 migration, but nothing from a complete end-to-end -end solution that will uh, get the, uh, the end users where they, uh, they want to be, unless, of course, you're using the Admin Studio Suite. Uh, just to give you a better idea of what you're looking at from a cost standpoint, you know, we have Admin Studio is available in three different editions, Standard, Professional, and Enterprise. It's available in two different types of licensing models, uh, one that we call the per-admin or a single-user, single-machine uh, licensing model. It's readily available uh, on the market uh, just as is the uh, per-desktop uh, licensing model. This is something that's designed for your typically larger organizations that have uh, more than, say, three people packaging and taking in applications at, at a time. This is a really, really good ideal licensing model for them to consider because it's not just limited to a single user or a single machine. We're talking about enabling a large team of people. Uh, from a cost standpoint, uh, at the most basic uh, standard level, we're lo looking at uh, $2,499, and of course, uh, these prices here are all at MSRP, uh, all the way upwards of $20,999 for everything that Mike had just shown you. And of course, if you want to work in uh, maintenance plans on top of that, we certainly offer maintenance plans. They're readily available. Uh, you figure you can work in a uh, cost of a maintenance plan for about 20 to 25 percent of what you're looking at from a product's MSRP. Uh, if you have any questions whatsoever, uh, totally open to taking calls. Please take note of our, uh, our partners here, uh, Tech Extend, uh, Mr. Kevin Askew, uh, and of course my contact information is there. Feel free to reach out uh, to me directly, either via email or uh, voicemail. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Kevin. Thanks, Jerry. We're going to check to see if anybody has any questions, please uh, post them in the chat, and uh, Jerry will be more than happy to answer them for you. Okay. Doesn't look like we have any questions. Um, again, we want to thank you for attending today, and thank you, Jerry and Mike. Um, to contact us, please send us an email at info at techextend.com or 800-221-7710 in the U.S. and in Canada, 888-423-2700. Thank you, and have a great afternoon.